Hello, this is Stimming. Today I'm going to show you the C15 from Nonlinear Labs. A company from Berlin, the founder of the company is Stefan Schmidt. To all the ones that don't know Stefan Schmidt, he's the founder of Native Instruments. It was his idea to use computers for making music or let's say for um, a computing sound. And um, this is this new product. Well, actually, it's not new. It's three or four years old. Um, the reason why I'm reviewing it is now it has MIDI. Yeah, it's true. A 4,000 euro keyboard finally has MIDI. But um, before I go deeper in the whole story, because it's, um, I think it's interesting. For, yeah, anyway, um, I'm going to show you some more presets. Okay, um, some of you might wonder, why is it something special that this thing has MIDI? Okay, the founder of Native Instruments, realizing how much, um, okay, I say it negatively, how much damage a company like Native Instruments did to electronic music in, um, you know, my opinion about those amounts of presets coming from Native Instruments, he decided to do something for all the people who actually play an instrument while using the technology from what he developed and also what the market in terms of computing power allows. This 4,000 euro keyboard synthesizer has an um, Intel NUC inside with an i3 processor. That means it's quite powerful. The keybed is pretty much the, the most expensive Fatah keybed that you can buy, and it's incredible. It feels so good. It's absolutely amazing. Those two touchpads, I'm not really a big fan because they're not... There's something strange about them. You always, when you touch them, you feel like, okay, you have to follow it. And, but of course, you can like jump to parameters, but somehow you don't know, you, you don't do it. There's a pitch bend which is um, pretty much like the one um, Clavia builds into its keyboards. And that's a big compliment because it feels incredibly, incredibly good. And the whole wooden housing, it's, it's a very luxury statement type of keyboard synthesizer, um, stage piano, but he somehow, when he brought it to the market, he decided, okay, I want the people to play it by hand and exclusively by hand. There's four, um, there's four ports for pedals. So you can kind of, uh, you can have four pedals on the ground and do some organ playing as well. He suggests to um, use two and the sustain pedal. So um, you see those buttons jumping around. It's actually my feet using the pedals. I'm afraid this is gonna get a very long review and I know like longer than half a minute or uh, half an hour always sucks a bit. But um, 
I know this is this going to be a long one. Still, I only scratched the surface of the actual possibilities. Yeah, let's show you another sound. So he decides to force the people to play it by hand or by feet. And total high-tech instrument played only by hand. It's a philosophy of making an instrument which is very interesting, I think, and also very brave. But it's a little bit... Uh, how can I say? It's a bit... It, it's strange. Yeah. You cannot get, get apart from the point that it's totally strange if you look at the reality of modern music production. And long story short, this thing finally can be played externally and it can record and you can use the keyboard as a master keyboard. You can have all the modern functions that you need to be able to, so local on off. You can assign all the controllers to MIDI controllers and internally the Keybed has a very, very high position in velocity. Also, oh, it has a monophonic aftertouch. That's important to know as well. Um, it has a very, very high velocity. And there is, which I didn't know before, there is some kind of a backdoor in the old school MIDI protocol where the velocity, which is usually, one, usually 128 steps, can have um, um, a backdoor with another 128 in between each of the first 128. So practically it's something like 16,000 16, step resolution for velocity. So that's actually quite precise. For the controllers, it's basically the same for the pedals. And yeah, want to hear some more sounds? This one. This one. I'm in C minor all the time. Okay, the sound architecture. Because he, he never had the automation in mind, he always wanted you to play this thing. It doesn't have any LFOs. It doesn't have any automation in the engine itself. It's basically it's two oscillators that are simple signs that can phase modulate themselves. They can either themselves or each other or against each other. And there's also feedback lines and there's a shaping algorithm that can shape the shaper with um, drive, fold, asymmetry, and also asymmetry, sorry. And also um, there's a feedback line from the basically very end of the engine. So you can um, feedback from the reverb output, for example, back into the oscillator section. All very complex, but built around a very simple core with three envelopes, one envelope um, connected to oscillator A and oscillator B and then envelope C. All of those react very, very nicely to velocity, but there's no LFO in there. Luckily, via MIDI, now finally you can uh, get it from the outside, but it's very clearly made for being played by hand and to get like input all the time, new input human input, organic input. That's why the engine, if you play it, like I did the, before. Oh. Again, C minor, no, let's go to E minor.
Klimper? Oh. That's why it reacts so organically to your playing style. Also, I'm not a good piano player, but... Oh, this doesn't work. Okay. those self-shaping and feedback lines, they can produce quite a good amount of distortion, but it's always, um, I think if I understood him right, he puts um, limiters, like, how do you say, like clippers in any stage, so the actual volume don't go, doesn't go crazy, but the waveform gets kind of cut, so it's, it can, the, the whole machine can get very rough very easily, but before that, let me show you how rough the machine can become. So I said there's a feedback path around basically anything in the oscillator section. So here's just the click. The click opens, comes from the envelope. Yeah, let me do that easily here. So that's just one sign. Then I put a little bit on, of reverb to it. That's just a sine wave and a reverb. Not that long. So I want to feed back the reverb into the oscillator section. So I have to, first I have to go to the feedback mixer and tell the feedback mixer to allow effects to come back here. Let's say 50%, it's going to go crazy very soon. Then I need to go in the shaper section, feedback mix. Oh. That's what I mean. It's like very, um, very easily. It's like over the edge. But if you dance on the razor's edge, it's um, very, very nice. The basics are two sign oscillators that can shape themselves and each other, and ring modulate, and yeah, frequency modulate as well, of course. Then there's a com filter, which is the one that made this thing sound like a guitar or something. Not just the piano, because if I have clavish here, we have some. That's the comp filter. Let me see the parameters here. I'm looking forward to modulate something like this with an LFO to have like a very fat wah 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 in here. There's also um, on the effect section there's a flanger, there's a gap filter, a, um, a cabinet. Like a I think that's what is applied here. Let me see. Yeah. So modulator two opens up the cabinet to mix cabinet mix. It's a modeling of a speaker, I think. A very good sounding reverb coming from the team that built Massive X and the Native Instrument Synthesizer. And obviously they know how to build a really, really good sounding reverb. It's actually the best sounding reverb that I know inside a, machine, inside a synthesizer, inside a hardware synthesizer and a delay. Then the COM filter can also be shaped or any sound in here can be shaped with a state variable filter. And all of this gets combined in the mixer that is um, both phase, how do you call this? It's like, um, you can mix all those, but you can do this in negative phase as well. There might be reasons which I haven't found out yet where you need the negative phase. And I think on any of those parameters, you can go negative. There's like, there's pretty much, I'm, I'm sure there's a very good reason 
there is some nerdness to the sound engine or some nerdiness. Some, there is a complexity that is very difficult to understand in terms of, like, when you think of the subtractive standard synthesizer, we all know what this thing is capable of and what not. Here, it's so different and um, the, the, the ranges of parameters are so fragile that programming it is, let's say, um, it's a challenge. Also, as you see, the concept of using it is like you always have to choose a parameter and then you can kind of tweak it here. You don't have to use this panel. You can also use your computer via your browser because as there's a real computer in there, it opens up a Wi-Fi network and you can connect to the computer and use it on your browser, on any browser actually. And you can program it here. So for example, if you want to change the main level, I can either do it here or here. Or if I want to change the COM filter decay, I can do that here. So I personally, I have it underneath the desk now as my MIDI keyboard. And if I want to program it, I just use the computer which I'm making music on and connect it to the, the Wi-Fi network. I also use the Wi-Fi for the Ableton Link protocol. So I don't, I'm not connected to the internet, but I still have a Wi-Fi network. That's quite cool. Another reason why this online or this browser-based um, usage of the C15 is clever I mean, from the founder of Native Instruments, what could it be? Of course, it's presets. So these are the presets I have on my machine. It was like three times more, and I um, sorted all of them out to get like a cool list for this review. But it's a freaking amount of presets, and it's a freaking bandwidth of what this thing is able to do. Let me just, like, to, to, to give you an example, I just jumped through a couple of those lists. FM comp. An L plucked. Oh, there's a Wawa. Another one, toy piano. Special effects, stand, sandstorm in Mars. Okay. What do we have here? Uh, and of course, I can rearrange, copy, um, uh, paste, uh, basically any function you would you think you need or you will need at one stage. Um, it you can do it here. It's like it's seriously, incredibly well thought out to the very, very, very last detail. While we are talking about details. As some of you might have recognized, it's a computer and... Oh, oh, yeah, there's a funny story. When they came on the market, it had 12 voices. It was a 12-voice synth. Um, and then, like a year ago, they sent a technician, a very friendly technician. Hi, what was your name again? Ah, I can't remember, I'm sorry. But it was very nice to have him here. And, of course, we, were, we, we wore a mask. And he opened up the C15, changed a bit, and then da, 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 magically it had 24 voices. And now you can also split the keyboard to play two sounds because they changed from Windows Embedded at the beginning to a Linux system. And somehow Linux is much more efficient. Crazy. Okay, so as this thing is a computer, and I, I, t I said now it can understand MIDI, it has one USB port. That brings us into the problem that this machine wants to be the MIDI host. And if you want to connect it to a computer, the computer you want to connect it to also wants to be a MIDI host. If you connect it simply to a Digitact, it's no problem. You can sequence this thing with a Digitact, which is freaking amazing. But if you want to connect it to a computer, you, you, you get into problems. That's why... 
they invented a tiny little box with a chip inside that um, mimics a USB slave, I'm sorry for the lack of a better name, to both those ports. Okay, I connect this one to the C15. And the other side to my Surface tablet. Then I have Bitwig open. Da -da -da. Then the NLL MIDI bridge device comes up. And, oops, I can play this thing. Okay, would be cool if I could use those gestures, but that's a that's a bit of speciality here. Um, finally, ah, actually, when I heard about it like a couple of months ago, I was like, "Yeah, now I can use it." Because beforehand, the only way to use this machine was to um, to play audio into a recorder and then hopefully get something useful out of it. Actually, in my new album, the one that comes out uh, pretty soon. And also in the second single, The Hive, I used the, the, the trumpet. The trumpet comes out of here. And then this celestophone track, which is on my album, also is the celestophone preset that I played in the very beginning. I think. This thing is, I mean, let's record something. <laughs> Finally, for the modern music producer, this thing is useful because we all cannot play a piano anymore. We don't have to, we have the computer. We, 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 we have different skills. It's not the actual hands that are so important anymore. It's our brain. Oh, that was dangerous. <clears throat> so finally, the whole synthesizer is in the, is in the, how can you say, the league of the real flagships and it competes against the world of quantum, the new Arturia Polybrood. Um, yeah, and that's why I thought this thing is worth a review. The sound engine, somehow, I would describe it as like the essence of the guy who invented native instruments. What does that mean? Uh, imagine a reactor patch, but one that is like more thought out than any other reactor patch out there, which is already quite powerful. But it's also, how can I say, it's a, it's a brave idea, also in terms of the engine itself. An oscillator just being able to build an audio spectrum that is radically different to others. It can do some kind of wave. Let me show you if I go to the default and... So that's a default sound. Is it default? No, that's only the, wait, in it, that's it. Hey. Yeah, and that's also one of the negative sides of the guy who invented native instruments. Things are a bit complicated. It's not really um, the, the most friendly interface you can imagine. Even, I think even the board looks a little bit like a reactor patch, doesn't it? By the way, those, those things are magnet pads, kind of, like you can remove them. I think the idea is he can build another synthesizer on this computer and you just buy a new set of those magnet pads and then whoosh, you get another synthesizer, which is very clever, I have to say. It's very future, it's, it's very thought on the long term. Also sending a technician to kind of double up the, um, the voices of this instrument and like in mind, I mean, it costs quite a bit to send someone from Berlin to Hamburg, not, not too much, but still it's very, very um, customer friendly and 
thought on the long run. So I honestly wish him all the best that this thing at one point will get some revenue because right now he's going to pay a lot into it. Anyway, and I wanted to show you like the basic sound idea behind it. So sound in and enter. Okay, you don't hear anything. You have to open it on the output mixer. That's the oscillator A sign. If if you do nothing else, then phase modulate it by itself. This is what happens. This is a sine wave that is phase modulated only by itself. And then you can put in the second oscillator. You can make a much more complex chamber in there. A little bit less here, a little bit more here. Ah, I'm doing something wrong, of course. Ah, mix. So that's the other shaper. Mm. Reverb. And this is just one oscillator. Mm. Let me show you a couple of more presets that I, um, uh, presets, the sounds that it can do. And yeah, I have to admit, it's not the best one on bass sounds. Let me go, I, I have a bass preset later on, and I'm gonna start with F minor. Could be the sound from Die Luft? No, das Meer. Das Meer on the track of mine. What does the pitch shift is the aftertouch here. But it's monophonic, unfortunately. Yeah, so I got one bass. With quite a big stereo width, the vinyl cutter will hate you for that. Yeah, it can do basses, but honestly, if I go through the sounds that are in the in the bass um, category, they're all not very convincing to me. The strength is definitely everything futuristic piano, everything plucked, um, gamelan, metal, xylophone kind of style, what we have. Uh, some distortion sounds are also very nice. Uh, a piano. Another one. Oh. String sounds work okay, I would say. Whatever. Magnolian. Harp. I 
amazing, isn't it? Like there's some, some organic realness to it that I really miss on other synths. You have to know if you sequence it from the outside. The reason why it's so organic is because it always gets a, a slightly different input in velocity. So if you sequence it like with static tones, it's going to sound static. And that's a little bit of the weakness of the engine. It only has this incredibly organic feel while still being plastic, like organic plastic, if you want. So um, if it's sequenced statically, it's going to sound static. And all those three million sounds that are that come with it and that you can download, very many of them have a little bit of a like artificial character. Stringer. So pads, strings, m m m xylophones, marimbas, all those plug sounds, that are the, the real, real strength of it. And honestly, there aren't many synthesizers out there who, well, there are many string synthesizers, but not xylophones. Ethno plug. Haiku. Uberton. Meander. Combo Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's a bit of a plastic uh, um, example. And the last one is for the for after the conclusion. Three years ago, when I first heard about the synth and its ability to create those plugged and string and harp sounds, I immediately fell in love, especially because I never heard those sounds from any other of the flagship synths. Of course, there's, there's a little bit of um, software out there. For example, like physical modeling kind of things. There's a reactor patch that has the same architecture, so you can get an idea of what it is possible. I checked it yesterday, but this thing sounds much better. It's not very good at basses. It's not very good at the classic saw wave kind of sounds and the filtered trancy vibes, but it can open up spaces that are very, very large because of the very good reverb. And the organic playfulness is absolutely incredible of this machine. The reason why he called his company Lon Linear Labs is those face modulating and feedback lines are incredibly difficult to compute and um, very easily it gets like a huge of, well, it's non-linearities and we all should know in the binary system, non-linearities are kind of like the holy grail. That's why he had this in mind. Oh, and there's one more thing. I said in the beginning, the only possibility for me to play this thing without MIDI was to um, record it into a recorder externally and hopefully get like something that was useful. Mm, what he did was um, he put a recorder into the machine that records the audio internally and you can play it back via your browser. You remember? That was the sound from the intro. I like that one. And um, you can download this as a flag file, FLAC, a flag, which is um, the best possible quality without being a WAV file. And da -da -da, there you have it. It also uh, remembers the preset you played back there, and you can um, switch back to the preset. And somehow, like the MIDI connectivity was giving 
the modern music producer what he actually needs, but also kind of solving a problem that the machine had before. It's like a double stroke on the latest version. So the conclusion after the conclusion, let's call it V2 um, under line 1.2.3. I love this thing. It has a little bit of the reactor and native instrument heritage with the freaking amounts of presets and possible uh, possibilities. Thankfully, he now allows this machine to be sequenced externally and be recorded and use the freaking good keyband as a master keyboard. He put a recorder in there. You can organize and program it via your browser. Oof. What else should a 21st century Rhodes should have? I don't know. I think that's the one. Thank you for watching, guys. Oh, there's the Zugpfeife. <laughs> oh, Zugpfeife.